j- just first and foremost, why the fuck are you even looking at reviews of this? Go see the goddamn movie. Do you really need to hear all this again from another critic? Best fucking movie of the summer. Maybe the entire year. One of the best superhero movies ever. Heath Ledger owns. He will be nominated for an Oscar. He should win it. It's essentially perfect. There. Now you've heard that from everyone on the goddamn planet and me. Get to the fucking theater already. And, and now you know, just you get that out of the way. Anyway, there comes a time in every superhero's life when he starts wondering if he'll ever be able to quit the game. In Hollywood, this time is known as the second movie in the series. Yes, Bruce Wayne, Christian Bale, once again, has come down with Superman 2 Blues. See, he wants there to be an end point for Batman so he can start settling down, and to that end, he's decided to pour his money and his batarangs into the efforts of one Harvey Dent, played by Aaron, am I finally a fucking movie star now, Eckhart, Gotham City's idealistic crusading district attorney, who's committed to making sure that the mobsters Batman takes down stay down and locked up. Oh, oh, hey, sidebar, sidebar. Geeks, nerds, fellow comic readers, my people, guys, listen, listen. You and I both know what Harvey Dent being in the series now means. You know it, I know it, we all know it. But let's be considerate and not blurt it out so that the rest of the audience can enjoy their surprise once Act 3 hits. Okay, it's just nice to do. And don't you go blowing the end of Watchmen for people either. Holy shit, holy shit, did you see that fucking trailer? <clears throat> Dent is a righteous, morally upstanding good guy, which, this being a Batman movie, means he might as well just move into a little ranch house directly underneath the sword of Damocles. Oh yeah, one more thing. The main reason Wayne would like to turn the crime-fighting reins over to Dent in the first place is so that he can rekindle things with Rachel Dawes. Who's magically turned way hotter and into a good actress in between movies. Oh, uh, except right now, she's kind of spoken for. In fact, she's nailing Harvey Dent. Awkward. Into all of this wanders the Joker. He's an anarchist. He's a terrorist. He's a mad bomber and a serial killer and a thief and a gangster and... Well, whatever he needs to be. He has no origin. He has no real name, and he has no logic or reason behind his motivations. He's just here to cause mayhem and madness because he finds it fucking hysterical to do. He likes to play with the mob, he likes to play with Harvey Dent, but he really likes to play with the Batman. There's no doubt about that last part, by the way. Heath Ledger owns this part, and it's a damn shame we won't see the likes of it again. He gives the best live-action version of the Joker, period, and one of the all-time great imaginings of the character. You have to see it to believe it. There's really nothing bad to say about this movie. It just rocks, which makes me feel kind of useless here because a critic is supposed to find something to at least criticize a little bit. And let me think. Oh, I, I got one, I got one. Someone really needs to tell Christian Bale gently to dial it back a bit on that Slayer impression he keeps doing for Batman's Batman voice. It's a little much, and it can't be good for his throat either. And look, he's going to need his vocal cords in working order about eight months from now when he's deer in the headlights on an E! News year-end wrap-up special trying to explain how he or anyone else came to think that appearing in a PG-13 Arnoldless Terminator sequel from the director of Charlie's Angels was a good fucking career move. <laughs> Oh, uh, one, one more thing, and this is more of a superhero movie beef than a Batman thing. Why, after six Batman movies, does Batman's costume still suck? I mean it. What the hell is going on here? Every Batman movie, no matter what else changes, they always end up overthinking the fucking bat suit. It's always too bulky. It always looks like a damn suit of armor, which doesn't make a lick of sense. Batman's supposed to be this super-fast, ninja-trained guy diving around shadows and dodging bullets and shit, but you can never, ever really buy it because it's obvious Christian Bale can barely move under the fucking thing. And it's got all this detailing and straps and belts and textures all over it, so you can barely make out the now teeny-weeny bat symbol, even. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm sure the costume designer had a theory behind all this, and it it doesn't hurt the movie at all, but it's annoying. I know, I know. This is supposedly more realistic. Not every superhero uniform is going to translate to live action, but Batman? Batman wears, like, the most minimalist, simple, plausible-looking outfit other than Superman. Is this really that hard to translate? Really? Two colors, a symbol, a belt? Really? Am I the only one who finds it kind of off that guys as ridiculous-looking as Spider-Man, Iron Man, and fucking Ghost Rider show up looking like they just walked off the goddamn page, but Batman always has to get realism to the point when he looks like Alex Murphy in hastily chosen cosplay? Uh, All right, all right. 
So there's my minor little bitch about Batman. Back to the important stuff. This movie is fucking unbelievable. You're not going to believe some of the twists and the cameos and the details and how off the rails awesome this gets and how you're never going to see some of this shit coming. Dude, just, just go see it. Go. Now. Turn off the fucking computer. Go to the theater. Go.